welcome. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I would I did like to speak about uh, the GCC optimization levels. And uh, like I have seen on the previous uh, talk, there was some discussion. So it would, I would be happy if you have some questions and uh, we get some discussion going as well. Uh, so basically the motivation for uh, giving this talk is that, uh, you know, people are sort of asking me sometimes, you know, uh, if they should build the programs by O3 and if it will be better or uh, there was a recent discussion, you know, whether uh, the Linux kernel should allow the O3 as the optimization flag in the configuration file. Uh, so maybe it's time to, uh, you know, explain this. Uh, so it's mostly focused on people which are not developing GCC uh, to, to have an idea how this works. And also it's a little bit a chance to compare it with LVM. Uh, so uh, let me see if I can switch the slide. Yes. Uh, so let's start with something which probably everyone knows. Uh, so GCC has the minus O option. Uh, there's O0 setting, which uh, disables all the optimization. And then historically, all the Unix compilers has minus O, which is O1, and uh, that enables the basic optimizations. Uh, so uh, the default optimization level is O2, uh, which is uh, what most programs are built with. And we have this O3 uh, for uh, aggressive optimizations. And uh, really recently, you know, that's kind of the picture how GCC behaved in 90s. And since 90s, uh, new optimization levels was added. Uh, so we have an OFAST, uh, which is taking O3, and it is also enabling some uh, non-conforming options, which are pretty uh, pretty useful to improve, especially floating point performance. Uh, we have uh, OG, uh, which was added in GCC 7, so uh, also a couple of years ago, uh, which is uh, basically uh, supposed to be something like O0, uh, but enabling, uh, enabling some optimizations. Uh, this is useful. Uh, for example, uh, in C++ programs, which has very high abstraction penalty, and they are so slow at O0 that they are almost impossible uh, to use. Uh, then we have OS, which is optimization for size. And recently in GCC 12, so uh, this year, uh, we have added OZ, uh, which is pretty much the OS, but it's optimizing even slightly more. I will say something about it later. I'm not sure if this was a good, uh, a good decision. Uh, so uh, there are some mm -hmm, other uh, other options, and maybe I will uh, close Facebook so it's not uh, uh, not pinging uh, me. And uh, there are some other options which are important. You know, fun is uh, the tuning. So we support native tuning, and we have some kind of generic model uh, which is supposed to work on all the common architectures and. Uh, we have this new architecture levels, which uh, enables some of the instruction sets, which was added later on x86-64. Uh, we have the profile feedback, which is a useful uh, feature to get uh, quite few of extra uh, performance out of the compiler. Uh, we have LTO, which is uh, relatively new, so enabling the link type optimization. Uh, so it's now used by default uh, by Tumbleweed for about uh, two years which was mostly work of Martin Lischka. So Tumbleweed was uh, basically the first uh, big uh, Linux distro using LTO by default. And uh, we have uh, the position independent code and now we are defaulting the position independent uh, executables uh, of, on, on Tumbleweed, which has some performance impact. We have the semantic interposition, which is uh, something where, where we differ from Clunk. Uh, so basically if you are building a shared library, uh, then the ELF standard uh, promises that you can uh, overwrite any uh, any symbol, you know, interpose it by a different symbol with different interpretation, uh, which is used, for example, if you replace malloc from the standard library by different malloc from your favorite uh, allocator. And basically, uh, this uh, makes optimization pretty hard because if you apply it to every externally visible symbol, it means that the compiler cannot uh, inline or uh, cannot do other optimizations. And uh, historically, GCC defaults uh, to semantic interposition because that's what the ELF standard says. And uh, we should be standard conforming, but the clock is different and it uh, defaults to no semantic interposition, uh, which makes uh, quite difference in some benchmarks. So if you look, for example, on the Foronic benchmarks where clunk is winning, uh, it's quite often the case that those are shared libraries and simply uh, GCC uh, doesn't think it's safe to inline. 
So there was also some discussions, you know, if the semantic interposition should be default for the distribution belt, there is a no strict aliasing, which is affecting the type based alias analysis, and it's used by kernel and Firefox and other things, and it's relatively performance important. And uh, we have hardening options, which are now used uh, quite extensively. So like Tumbleweed is built with the fortification, stack protection, unlike tables and uh, other things. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think that those are relatively uh, little performance tested. So they also should be taken into consideration. Uh, you know, there are examples like in the Firefox where we decide to harden uh, put pixel in the graphic library and then suddenly put pixel becomes very slow because uh, we have to catch the possible stack overflows, uh, which never happens. But uh, anyway, we are afraid of them. And that's also, you know, Clunk and GCC has slightly different heuristics deciding uh, where uh, the hardening should happen. So that's the basic setup. And basically, I would like to speak a little bit, you know, how uh, the GCC developers are maintaining these optimization options. Uh, so basically, uh, if you take on the compiler, you know, every compiler consists of uh, some optimization or some passes. And in GCC uh, 12, there's 275 different passes. And there are some 36 machine specific passes in addition to that. Uh, so uh, generally the idea is easy, you know, if you have uh, a new optimization pass, so most of them are optimization passes, so some of them kind of necessary glues uh, to keep the compiler working, like the code generation or uh, uh, register allocations, let's say. Uh, basically, we are uh, checking uh, some criteria, you know, there's no official way to do it, but at least that's my mental model, how, uh, how the passes are considered. And basically, we decide, you know, if the pass is uh, enabled on given optimization level or not, or, you know, if it should be included in GCC at all. Uh, so the first thing is, of course, the correctness of the pass. So, you know, if the pass is uh, breaking uh, standard conforming programs, uh, then it's generally not welcome in GCC at all. Uh, there are exceptions because, uh, like, the OFAST enables uh, some uh, transformations which are not strictly valid, but they are valid for a very large uh, set of programs. And uh, there are also some exceptions uh, which uh, happens that uh, 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 that the standards are either contradictory or completely uh, impossible to implement or very close to impossible to implement. And then uh, we have few exceptions where we are intentionally breaking the standards. Uh, in the paper, I have listed one uh, for uh, alias analysis rules, uh, where basically the C and C++ standard promises that if you put uh, two structures into the union and they have the same prefix, you can access one by the other, uh, but they forget to explain, you know, where the union should be. Uh, so uh, basically uh, this uh, taken to the complete uh, part uh, would require uh, merging uh, alias sets of all these, uh, of these classes which is not something we want to do because uh, that would uh, make the alias analysis uh, quite a bit weaker. So there are some, uh, uh, you know, sadly not very well documented uh, cases uh, where, uh, where the uh, standard is not adhered. And uh, we are not trying to introduce uh, too many of them. So we are trying to avoid this. So uh, the one thing which you hear pretty often is that the O3 is broken, you know, it's producing a wrong code. Uh, so uh, this is usually not true. Uh, you know, what can happen is that the code is non-conforming and it happens to work with O2, but it doesn't work with O3, maybe because more inlining happened and GCC was able to propagate something which it didn't before, and it suddenly makes uh, the program to break. Uh, so definitely, uh, you know, the wrong code bugs which are affecting O3 are taken as seriously as uh, the wrong code bugs of O2. And... Uh, yeah, so we, we should fix them between uh, you know, the releases. And also, uh, so, yeah, so the O3 is tested uh, quite uh, well, but of course not as much as O2 uh, because uh, most of the distros are built with O2 uh, by default. So generally O3 should be safe, you know, everything except for OFAST. So this is what OFAST does. You know, it is enabling uh, the fast mass, which was the original motivation for it, uh, which for example, makes the compiler to assume that it can, uh, uh, you know, assume that there are no, not a number of values or such a things. Uh, then it uh, changes this semantic interposition flag, which is a new behavior since the last release of GCC 12. 
and uh, we allow data store license, uh, which means that uh, the GCC is allowed to uh, load and store the same value uh, to the memory, uh, where previously uh, previously no store has happened. So this is important, uh, for example, for the if conversion and uh, and vectorization. So this is uh, uh, this is uh, the correctness issues. Uh, the second thing which is important is uh, that uh, the GCC should not be getting slower every year. Uh, so we are uh, considering uh, the performance and scalability of the pass. Uh, so we are not trying to enable passes which explodes uh, in compilation time. So here, you know, the O1 and OG is taken more seriously than O2 or an O3. Uh, you know, we allow uh, some of the more expensive passes to happen at, uh, at uh, O2. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, we, we try to avoid, you know, any non-linear algorithm uh, at O2. If possible, we'll have uh, some uh, some parameter uh, which will prevent it from taking too much time on very large uh, input. Uh, so, you know, if you see that the compiler gets stuck, uh, there is a pretty easy way to figure out if some optimization pass is uh, responsible. You can uh, use the time report flag. And once you see the specific optimization pass, then we add uh, some thresholds so we are trying to fix the algorithm. So that's something which is uh, done over the years. And that was really a significant progress, uh, let's say in the last decade, you know, when we switched to SSA, which is the better set of algorithms uh, compared to the previous uh, data flow based ones. And we chased away most of the, uh, the uh, non-linearity uh, at least uh, those which are triggering often enough. Uh, so uh, the next thing is that in GCC 10, uh, we also introduced the way that the parameters uh, which are controlling these passes uh, can be different on the different optimization levels. So for example, we know enable inlining uh, on O2, you know, which we didn't do in the past, uh, but we give it uh, more reduced parameters uh, to work with. So it's not as expensive as the O3 inlining. Uh, so, uh, yeah, generally, uh, we do not want to have passes which are not uh, not useful on the fully grown programs. Uh, we have some exception, you know, at least I, I can think of the IPA PTA, which is the algorithm for uh, alias analysis, points to, uh, which explodes on any uh, really bigger program, at least with LTO. Uh, so it is disabled uh, by default on all the, all the uh, optimization levels because of that. Uh, and there is a plan to, to implement it better. So it's actually something I'm playing with uh, right now. Uh, so the next thing is that, uh, you know, if you have the optimization, uh, you know, it might be selling, uh, selling the code size uh, to get some performance. Uh, so, you know, at O2 and below, uh, we are generally want, you know, using optimizations which are not uh, selling too much of code size for the performance. Uh, so, you know, the, the ratio has to be justified and for O3, you know, we are willing to, uh, we are willing to, you know, uh, trade more of the code size. I have numbers on that uh, later. And uh, then you have some kind of the risk factors, which uh, involves the fact that sometimes uh, the heuristics are hard to set up. Uh, so there might be uh, cases where the pass is very useful and improves the performance a lot. Uh, but there might be cases which uh, where the pass is also hurting the performance a lot, and those might not be easy to to separate. Uh, so, for example, uh, we spent long time to enable O2 uh, vectorization because uh, yeah, if you do the vectorization, you might run into surprises like uh, uh, this partial memory uh, stall problems. Uh, so uh, basically, we want uh, O1 and O2 to be quite safe, and we are allowing O3 and O5 to be less safe. And in general, I think we are quite conservative because the way uh, we develop GCC is that uh, we take back seriously. Uh, so if there is a program which regresses in performance between the GCC uh, GCC releases, uh, you know, we, we should uh, fix it uh, for the next release. So each time you add uh, such a such a risky optimization to, to one of these standard levels, uh, you have to expect that you will be chasing bugs uh, for quite a while. Uh, so there is sort of uh, you know, people are worried to to put uh, put unsafe uh, optimizations in this definition, and we also try to avoid uh, breaking a non-conforming code. You know even at O3, 
so for example, you know, the type-based alias analysis contains some hacks which are making the common code to work, like you know, Python or Parallel contains uh, broken uh, broken C. So uh, we try to deal with that, even if it costs some uh, some uh, performance. So this is the basically uh, basically uh, the set of the things uh, which I think most of the GCC developers think of uh, when they are proposing a new optimization at the given level. And uh, the other thing is that uh, we need to do a benchmarking because uh, without uh, real numbers, uh, you don't really know what's going on. Uh, so the most uh, comprehensive benchmarks are actually done by SUSE. There is a web page, which is a GCC open source org. And there are two kinds of uh, machines testing. Uh, you know, there's a one maintained by Martin Lischka, which is having a fancy uh, interface. And there's the ones which are maintained by Richard, which is uh, based on the GNU plot. And what we do, we are tracking x86-64. And recently, uh, we also track uh, uh, you know, uh, ARM64. And uh, we are running uh, quite a few benchmarks. So the first thing is that we run the spec 2006 and 17, which is kind of the standard uh, benchmarks for comparing CPUs and compilers. And they have the benefit that every uh, compiler developer knows what this benchmark is. Uh, and he has the idea, you know, what the numbers means. Uh, but, you know, these benchmarks are not perfect. Uh, they are actually sometimes quite bad. Uh, so we test more things. Now we are testing the Fortran polyhedron. We are testing some C++ benchmarks, which we collected uh, for tuning inliner and IPA, you know, which are kind of more aggressive in the use of C++ than specs. Uh, we are uh, testing uh, vectorization benchmarks recently. And I think a lot of uh, GCC developers do their own testing. So for example, I'm benchmarking Firefox and GCC and Clunk, and I'm looking, you know, how they compare a build by GCC and OVM. And I'm trying to do it, uh, you know, every, every September, uh, basically uh, because of the GCC release, release cycle. This is end of the stage one development. Uh, so the GCC is already uh, quite different from the previous GCC, and uh, it lets me to fix the problems. And basically, I choose the Firefox and Clank uh, because uh, they are centric on uh, LVM compilers. Uh, so it is, uh, you know, it is easier to find uh, GCC code generation issues uh, with those because, uh, you know, if Clank fares better, it's uh, sort of easy to figure out uh, why. Uh, so uh, that's uh, something which uh, also I would like to mention, you know, uh, it's very hard to find a good benchmarks for compiler. And uh, so, for example, the, you know, I tried other things like LibreOffice and, uh, and some databases and uh, Java runtime and so on. Uh, but these things are usually very hard to get working. And then you figure out that you don't know how to benchmark them. Uh, so we would actually welcome uh, collaboration on, on benchmarking uh, you know, other uh, real world programs. Uh, because the specs are sort of synthetic and they are relatively small benchmarks. And if you uh, tune things like LTO, uh, you want to really tune it for very big programs. Though. So that's why I do the Firefox and Clank, because uh, uh, the Firefox has very nice benchmarking servers, which I can use. And the Clank is something which I sort of understand, uh, so I can benchmark it well by myself. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the thing we do. And I would like to show you, you know, how the levels behave, and I will see how much time it will take. Uh, so those are benchmarks which was done with GCC 12 and LVM 15, which are kind of the current release. LVM 15 was pre-release uh, snapshot. They are based on Zen 3 machine. And uh, uh, basically, uh, that was done by Martin Jambor, so I'm happy that uh, he did it for me. Uh, so this is uh, what the spec uh, consists of. So that's having two test suites. You know, one is an integer uh, test suite and contains some of the common programs which we are using, like Perl or uh, GCC. And it has you know, some more exotic things like uh, Sudoku solver. Uh, so this is supposed to be representative for integer program. The spec FP has uh, representative runs for floating point programs. And it is mostly some scientific uh, simulation. There is also uh, uh, ray tracing, you know, the poverty and uh, other things. Uh, so uh, to get to some numbers and to explain how it works. Uh, so this is uh, O0 compared to O2. Uh, 
so in this uh, row, uh, there are runtimes of O2. And in here, you know, there are runtimes with O0. And this is the relative change. Uh, so the red means that O0 is slower than O2. Uh, so the you know, red means it's worse than the baseline. And this is for GCC. And the next column is for LVM. So you can see that in, in general, uh, the O0 is about 66 percent slower than uh, O2. Uh, so that's uh, just to get you the idea. I know you have over uh, 200 passes, but they all together at 66 percent. So basically, every optimization in GCC is adding a you know, very small uh, amount uh, you know, to this number. And this is the code size. So again, you know, O2 base, uh, O0 code size, and then the relative conversion. Uh, so here uh, you can see that uh, LVM is building slightly bigger uh, programs, even with O0, uh, which a little bit surprised me. But uh, you know they are they are doing it faster because they have integrated uh, integrated assembler, uh, which is saving uh, quite some uh, time. Uh, so uh, this is more interesting. Uh, I think uh, that's O1. Uh, so uh, the difference between O1 and O2 is uh, around uh, nine percent in integer and 5% in floating point, uh, but it's uh, quite a big difference in the compile time. And you can see that uh, the big differences amounts uh, to relatively specific benchmarks. So this is the X264 uh, is the video encoding, and uh, the 60% is mostly based uh, on vectorization. And the Zalang is uh, kind of uh, XML to HTML converter. And it is using quite high abstraction penalty C++ uh, code base. Uh, so you can see uh, that uh, that uh, amounts to uh, to bigger percentage. But uh, you know this is really uh, you know really uh, quite uh, quite typical example. Uh, you know it's uh, very uh, easy to get the ninety five percent of the performance, but the last uh, five ten percent is is quite hard. Uh, so that's the O two setting, and here you have the comparison of uh, of LVM01 to GCC01. Uh, so LVM is uh, more aggressive on inlining, and uh, that makes difference on Zalang. You know, we don't want to increase inlining at O1 because that would affect uh, the uh, compilation times. And that's an important aspect for O1. Uh, so here's the code size. And here you can see that LVM is really producing uh, quite a bigger code. Uh, especially on the Zalang, and uh, which is quite a big, uh, uh, big benchmark. You know, it's a uh, four max of binary. Uh, so that's uh, uh, that's why we don't want to do it because uh, you know, increasing increasing the binary size by thirteen percent is also making the compilation slower by at least uh, five to ten percent, and that's uh, quite a lot. So that's the O1 setting. Uh, so now uh, the O2 is slightly easier because I decided to base all the numbers uh, relatively to GCC O2. Uh, so here it is. Uh, it is only, only comparing GCC O2 with LVM O2, and you can see that uh, uh, that LVM is winning in uh, three of the benchmarks. You know, this is more or less a noise. Uh, GCC is winning in also three benchmarks. Uh, so uh, why uh, we are losing so much at the video encoding? Well, the reason is that we are uh, not allowing as much of vectorization on on uh, O2 as LVM did. So until last year, we did no vectorization at O2, and actually this has made something like 40% difference on this benchmark. Uh, but we are still doing vectorization only when it's very simple. Uh, so I think that's a typical example of the code which should be compiled with O3. So it's not that uh, big problem, but it's also some sometimes a reason. You know, when you see uh, comparisons of GCC and Clunk, uh, you can see that uh, Clunk wins at O2 on on this type of code. Uh, so this nine percent Lila is a is a, a go player, and again it is mostly about uh, about uh, more aggressive uh, inlining. And there is an image magic, which is 26%. And that's a casually kind of strange architectural problem with the partial register store and missed inline. There are some patches on the on the GCC uh, post-it, which, which are trying to, uh, to solve this. 
Uh, so also I should probably mention that the exchange is the only Fortran benchmark because LVM doesn't have Fortran. You know, we are missing, uh, we are missing uh, one number. Uh, so this is uh, this is comparison of O2 to O2. I have also made the code size comparison, and here uh, GCC is uh, is uh, producing uh, mostly uh, mostly smaller code. Uh, so the red here means that it's good for GCC uh, because it's comparing you know, GCC is the base. Uh, interestingly enough, this X264 you know LVM makes uh, makes. Uh, uh, smaller, even with this aggressive factorization, uh, which I think it's something we probably want to look into because uh, you know we only enabled very carefully factorization in the last release, so uh, maybe uh, there is a chance to uh, to get it uh, working uh, slightly better. So uh, now, if you look at the O3, uh, then uh, again, now this is O2 base. Uh, this is the O3. Uh, this is uh, the relative speed up of uh, O3 with respect to O2, and this is uh, comparing LVMs uh, O3 to GCC O3. So here, you know, GCC is uh, generally more aggressive on optimization than LVM. Uh, so we tend to win in in probably all the benchmark except for XZ. Uh, again, in the image magic, there is this uh, problem with the missed inline, which is understood, and then um, some work being done on it even though it's pretty hard uh, to figure out what uh, the correct uh, solution should be. And uh, so, yeah, the performance is this 13%. It's mostly coming from this uh, vectorization of uh, video encoding. And the exchange is actually a very strange benchmark, which is uh, producing Sudoku. And there is a very specific trick, uh, which uh, makes the exchange work faster, uh, which is based on function cloning for uh, the recursion of the fixed depth. Uh, so I would say that uh, this is not a very typical number. So you should expect uh, the speed up to be somewhere between, I don't know, uh, three to, uh, to 10 percent uh, based on the other numbers. Uh, so in floating point, uh, this is uh, this is actually uh, quite uh, quite typical, I would say. So uh, this is the code size, and here it is also uh, relatively interesting. So you can see that GCC is uh, willing to uh, to sell uh, quite a lot of code for the performance. Uh, so if you look on the code uh, segment only, because this is including uh, the data segments, uh, the code uh, grows is about thirty percent. So you, you we grow the code by thirty percent uh, for a speed up of about thirteen uh, percent. And uh, if you take uh, typical integer programs like Perl or GCC, you know the speed up is somewhere between uh, three and four percent. So, in my opinion, for example, the Linux kernel is not as good a candidate for O3, except if you want to mark a specific parts of the kernel to be compiled with O3 because uh, they are known to be uh, CPU intensive. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, yeah, you know it should work. You know there is no reason to exclude it because uh, because it's broken. Uh, so that's uh, uh, that's uh, the situation with code size. An interesting thing is that LVM is uh, tuned at O3 more carefully. So you know when LVM was new, the O2 and O3 levels was very close to each other, and uh, they are still closer than than in GCC. You know in GCC we are really allowing uh, allowing more code growth and more compilation time to be spent. Uh, so. That also makes the problem that you know if you benchmark O3 with Clunk, you know it doesn't mean that O3 with GCC is a good option for you. Uh, so the next thing is OFAST. Uh, the OFAST has a very small effect on integer benchmarks. You know the previous speed up was uh, 13 percent, and uh, here it's also 13 percent, which is not surprising because the semantic interposition is not really affecting uh, non pick codes, so it would have more effect if it was shared libraries. Uh, but in the floating point, there is a big difference because uh, you allow much more vectorization and transformations with fast mass than without. So before it was a 9% speed up, and now it is now it is 20%, so extra 10% for, uh, for uh, losing some precision. And again, uh, compared to LVM, uh, there, are, there is this image magic which is suffering uh, from partial memory stalls and, uh, and missed inline. Uh, 
Yeah, again, I, you know, I forgot to mention it. These compilation errors, they mean that the benchmarks are in Fortran. And uh, because we don't have Fortran for LVM setup, uh, we cannot, uh, cannot measure it. Okay, uh, this is the code size. It's pretty much the same story as for O3, so I'm not going to uh, speak about it too much because I think it's overwhelming the uh, quantity of numbers anyway. Uh, but this is uh, this is uh, the situation for the basic optimization levels. I will have a summary slide uh, coming very soon. And uh, now the uh, fancy optimization levels, uh, which is OS. Uh, here is important difference between GCC and Clang. You can see that in GCC, uh, the OS code is about 17% slower than O2 because it's optimizing for size and not for speed. In Clunk, uh, the difference is much smaller. You know, so this is comparison to O2. So Clunk is generally producing uh, faster OS code, uh, but also the OS code is much bigger. So if you look on the size comparison, uh, you know, here is uh, relative to O2, you know, so there's double digit uh, reduction on almost everything except for this benchmark, which has very large data structure. So it's very small code segment and very large data. Uh, with uh, LVM, uh, this is uh, different. So, you know, the LVM is really closer to GCC O2 than GCC OS in size. Uh, so I really don't know why uh, the OS was defined this way on LVM. Uh, but they sort of noticed uh, the problem and they decided to introduce uh, OZ, which, uh, which I put here. I should have put it earlier. Uh, so the OZ is pretty much what OS is for GCC. So now the LVM is also slow. And uh, if you look on the code size, it is producing uh, code which is more comparable to GCC. Uh, but, uh, ah, no, no, I put it here. Uh, so, so it's producing the code which is more comparable to GCC, but it is still bigger, you know, up to uh, double digit in size. So I think the OZ uh, needs uh, some tuning, uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the situation. And this is just a quick look, you know, how the OG looks like. There is also difference between GCC and Clang. So in GCC, we are very careful to not break any debugging because that's what OG is. Uh, so the code is still 20% slower than O2. I know O1 was 10% slower than O2, uh, but it is still uh, much faster than O0 because it was 60% slower. You know, LVM OG seems to be pretty much uh, comparable to LVM O2, uh, and uh, I don't know how to compare the debugging experience. You know, generally LVM is producing a less uh, elaborate uh, debug info for optimized code. So maybe they only introduced OG for uh, for the compatibility reasons. Okay, so this is uh, this is the code size comparison, which I think it's not so interesting because uh, the uh, that's not the goal of OG. And uh, uh, this is uh, last uh, few things which I wanted to include. Uh, so one thing is the native tuning, which is enabling all the fancy new instructions. You know, the baseline is with the generic instructions and uh, tuning and instructions from early 2000s. Uh, so you can see that all these instructions adds very little to the integer performance, which is 1%, but they add something like 10% to uh, floating point, which is uh, expected because uh, you know, those are mostly uh, vector instructions. And uh, uh, this is uh, the code size. So again, you know, the code size becomes bigger because we do more vectorization and the vectorization generally uh, consumes a code. Uh, so uh, this is link time optimization. Uh, so with link time optimization at O2, uh, the performance improves a little bit, which is 3% over the oh, you know, normal mode. And it is even less on... Uh, on uh, on floating point, but if you combine the LTO together with the profile feedback, uh, then the speed up is 16%, which is you know much more than what we have seen uh, before. Uh, so uh, the general idea is that uh, if the profile feedback can be used and something is performance critical, you know it's probably going to make a huge difference. So for example, I'm a little bit sad that uh, the uh, profile feedback code in the Linux kernel is a bit rotting or that we didn't set up more of the profile feedback in, in the packages. You know, we do some, you know, we do compile GCC or, or the basic scripting languages with profile feedback as well as, as Firefox. Uh, so that's a, a 
uh, that's uh, the LTO and PGO. And I think, uh, you know, I should get to the summary. Uh, so this is the code size, uh, which is also important uh, because uh, the LTO in GCC is a very good uh, optimization for size. Uh, so it generally saves enough of uh, code size so that O3 with LTO is about the size of O2 without LTO. So it lets you to buy a lot of space for extra optimization. Uh, this is different from Clunk because in Clunk uh, the LTO is uh, not really having the global decision stage. You know, a lot of things is pushed into into kind of uh, per unit parallel uh, optimizers with cherry picking. So the with Clunk the code size goes up. I have some graphs on that uh, later, but not here. Uh, so uh, that's uh, yeah. I think I will. Yeah, this is with uh, native, so I will skip that and I will go. Uh, I will go to the summary. Uh, so basically, uh, you have the O2 O2 based options, and if you go for the basic O2, you know you get about sixty to seventy percent speed up over O0, and the code size improves. Uh, if you add LTO, uh, you get extra uh, extra five or three percent and uh, very little on spec FP. Uh, but you get a lot of a uh, lot of code size saving, uh, which is good, you know, if you are building distributions. So I think uh, basically to switch to LTO by default has uh, has helped us with making uh, the tumble weeds more. Okay, yeah, I know. And uh, then if you have uh, the profile feedback, uh, you get a lot of extra performance. You know, the 16 performance percent performance on specs is really a huge difference. You know, you can compare it with 10% uh, uh, difference made for AVX, and you can see how much engineering was put into that. And it also saves even more code size because we have very aggressive uh, size optimizations. And uh, if the profile feedback says that the code is not executed, we optimize it for size. Uh, so this is really good for things like Firefox or GCC itself, which are suffering from the bloat, you know, they are too large. Uh, because, uh, you know, the 40 percent code size different it's a, is, is uh, yeah, very substantial. Uh, so uh, then you have the O3 based optimizations, which I measured only in the basic setup. Uh, it gets you extra 10 percent performance at the expense of uh, 30 percent, uh, 30 percent code size growth, which is sort of expected what it should do. You know, it lets GCC to uh, make a bigger code and spend more time on compiling with the promise that the internal loops will run faster. Uh, then we have the OFAST, which is useful on uh, spec FP, and it gets another 10% over O3. And then, uh, you know, I tested uh, these uh, uh, tunings. So the native tuning is important for floating point, but it's not so important for integer. Uh, so, yeah, that's something which also kind of curious with the current uh, discussions to switch uh, the architectural level to, for example, allow more SSE. Uh, I think in the normal integer programs, there is uh, relatively little to get from, uh, from this. Uh, then, uh, you know, if you look on, uh, on uh, the native tuning and LTO, uh, you get, uh, you get, uh, extra extra five and one to two percent over over all fast and if you enable the profile feedback uh you save a lot of code which is 50 uh, percent of code you know even with uh with the lto and profile feedback the 20 percent is a lot uh but uh, you also get a quite substantial uh, performance improvement so that's interesting thing that it's seven percent which is less than with o2 because it's 16 percent and the trick is that uh, the profile feedback uh, generally enables the optimizations, which are O3 and OFAST only, uh, given that it knows that the loop or the function is hot. So basically, the O2 with LTO and profile use is very similar to the O3 native and profile use. So here, the extra performance is from the OFAST setting, and also that uh, we increase uh, some limits even more even on, on this uh, setup. So, uh, and then the OS is about 40% uh, compared to O2. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just to make a kind of uh, overview how this uh, flex was changing in the past. 
Uh, so if you have GCC2 or earlier, you had only 01, 02, 03. I think the GCC1 has only 01, but I'm not sure. I no longer remember. Uh, you know, people tend to use 04 or, or bigger numbers, but they do nothing for a very long time. You know, there was some branches like Pentium GCC in the 90s, which uh, did it, uh, but it no longer make any sense. And we have no plans to introduce uh, 04. Uh, so then uh, in GCC 3 and 4, uh, the O3 was uh, extended by more optimizations. So originally O3 was defined as, uh, as O2 with extra inlining. And uh, then we added OS. And uh, then we was also working on the scalability issues of O2, basically, uh, by introducing the SSA-based algorithms. So these days, the O2 is significantly more scalable uh, than it was back in GCC2 era, because that was hitting uh, more problems. And uh, uh, I'm almost finished. Uh, so uh, yeah, the other thing is that recently uh, we started to modify O2, you know, a little bit uh, because we are chased by Clank. Uh, so we enabled auto inlining in GCC10, which was uh, basically my project. And the motivation was that Clank was doing it, but not only that, but uh, that the C++ code bases are really very sensitive to this. And because the C++ is growing in importance, uh, you know, we should uh, we should adapt. So that was one big change. And the other big change was in GCC 12, the enabling uh, the vectorization with very reduced settings, but still at uh, O2. Uh, so. Uh, this is uh, this is the list of the things which O3 gets you today. Uh, so there are some extra things like cloning, inlining, uh, partial redundancy elimination, and uh, loop, loop optimizations. So the idea is that basically the first set of the things are interprocedural optimizations, which uh, consumes a lot of code uh, size, and the heuristics cannot be done completely reliable on on that. And uh, loop optimizations has the problem that, uh, again, you know, the heuristics are pretty hard to tune for every possible scenario. So they uh, they might or might not uh, improve the code. And, but if they do, they improved it a lot. And uh, uh, so if you compare GCC and Clank, uh, there are some important things uh, to uh, keep in mind. So the LVM originally started with more aggressive O2 because it was trying to chase the GCC performance and doing more optimizations by default uh, helped it. And that means that it is uh, doing things like vectorization and inlining more than GCC and it's producing a bigger code. And uh, the other thing is that the LVM's O3 is closer to O2 and the same is for OS. You know, they are actually quite uh, similar to each other. And then there was added this OZ, which uh, is GCC OS. And I think that's quite confusing, but there is uh, not much to do about it. Uh, there is a huge difference uh, in implementation of LTO. Uh, so the LVM's LTO is uh, more scalable, uh, but it uh, makes the code uh, bigger over the non-LTO builds. But GCC LTO has this uh, global optimization pass, uh, the VPA, and it's really trying to make the code smaller. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, know I was speaking with LVM developers and I was saying that maybe the global pass is missing and they are uh, wasting some optimization opportunities, but because they are faster, you know, they can produce bigger code and they can get the performance. And this works, you know, if you are building some huge applications like uh, the uh, server of, uh, of Google or Firefox, but I think for uh, distribution of build or for many on other programs, the size is important. So uh, actually we can implement the similar model to GCC as, GC as LVM does, uh, but uh, it's work. And I don't know what, you know, how much uh, the user base would be interested. Uh, so that's something which is sort of on the to-do list, but it's not being actively worked on. Okay, so this is the uh, last couple of slides, and I will try to be fast because I have something like two minutes. So this is how the uh, optimization flux uh, develop in the time. So the last eight years of GCCs, you can see that O2 got about 10% faster on integer. And that was a huge step uh, last uh, year because we enabled vectorization. Uh, and uh, this is true for both Zen and for uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is ARM-based CPU. And the size, uh, unfortunately, uh, we got bigger, but that's a change in the library of Fortran. 
otherwise uh, the size also uh, got smaller. And if you look on all three, and this is kind of the most aggressive setting, you know, OFAST, native tuning, and LTO, uh, the difference between comparisons is quite big. You know, it's about 20% if you go back to GCC6. Uh, so it might look like we are doing nothing, but we are actually improving over, over the years. And this is uh, the difference in the code size. So unfortunately, we also get the code size much bigger because, uh, yeah, because we do more vectorization, basically. And this is how it works on uh, Clunk. Uh, so that's the last slide I would like to speak about. So I hope I have a minute. Uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, the size of the binary built by Clunk with O3. Uh, this green bar is GCC O3, so you can see uh, that it is about 10% bigger. Now we are having more aggressive tuning here. Uh, but this is the GCC LTO, which is already smaller than the Clunk build. Uh, the Clunk LTO is even bigger than GCC. You know, it's something like 15% bigger. And then if you do the profile feedback, uh, that is uh, the small bar, the red one is a Clunk, and the blue one is GCC. So you can see there is a huge difference in the code size, which is actually something like 40% if you limit it on the code segment. And this is the performance. Uh, the TP50 is uh, the speed of serving uh, the most popular 50 pages of many years ago. And you can see that uh, the GCC feedback, uh, profile feedback LTO is doing quite a difference. And the responsiveness is uh, also interesting because that's kind of the time it takes uh, uh, to get to the waiting loop, you know, after doing some action like clicking on the page. And that's uh, quite sensitive uh, to code layout. So uh, this is something I was working recently on because uh, uh, Clang got uh, more lucky. Uh, and uh, this is sort of set of the micro benchmarks, like looking up HTML uh, uh, DOM tree. Uh, and there, the difference is quite huge because uh, you know the micro benchmarks can be optimized uh, very easily. You know the memory cache size are not a big issue. So you know you can get uh, quite substantial speed ups for these options uh, even even on the real world programs, even if the program is optimized uh, specifically for Clang you know, having Rust code and other things. Okay, so this is uh, the last slide and I will get it very quickly. Uh, so uh, the one problem which I see often is that people default to O3 because CMake developers decided it's cool. And I think it's a stupid idea, you know, it should be O2. Uh, people use the no strict aliasing for decades because, uh, and that's really hurting performance quite noticeably. Uh, you know, some people get the idea that OS is good because it's smaller, it will be faster, but it's almost never faster, it is smaller. Uh, so maybe, you know, we want some kind of uh, more balanced, uh, smaller O2, but, you know, getting extra optimization level is painful. Uh, you know, the thing is that if you do uh, shared libraries, you should think about the semantic interposition. Uh, that's very important because otherwise uh, the compiler cannot optimize very well because it has to expect that every function might change the meaning. And, you know, people use the hardening options, which generally are pretty neutral. I, I didn't include the numbers, but they was uh, below 1%. Uh, but for example, in Firefox, uh, you know, uh, we harden put pixel and draw line and these things, and that makes rendering noticeably slower, like 15%. And uh, the thing is that, yeah, people believe that these settings make sense and do not benchmark very well or do not report the anomalies uh, to GCC Bugzilla. But we are actually very happy to have uh, to have test cases and benchmarks. And okay, so that's all I wanted to speak about. So okay, I didn't burn any CPU on the on the testing, but uh, yeah, there was some kind of quite a compilation time, mostly done by Martin Jamper. So thank you. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, there was this uh, thing, uh, the, the big discussion about uh, uh, using uh, different baseline for the 64-bit uh, mm -hmm. uh, x86 uh, distribution using uh, like uh, including the SSE instructions in the baseline so that um, uh, CPUs that don't 
uh, have all SSE instructions come around the code. But mm -hmm. so far, uh, the benchmarks didn't show universal chain uh, in performance. Like mm -hmm. there was small chain in some benchmarks, there was small detriment in other benchmarks. There was no great summary, so I don't know how many benchmarks actually showed uh, uh, chain and how many showed that, uh, uh, performance loss. But mm -hmm. yeah, in light of what you just said, that the GCC is very careful with vectorization, it makes sense that uh, it doesn't make much much of a difference. Yeah, well, GCC is kind of full at O2, you know, it probably will get more aggressive. Uh, but this is actually all fast. So even even with you know aggressive factorization, uh, the change is around one percent. You know for enabling all the features of Zen three, uh, and I believe that most of the speed up is coming from uh, from AVX. You know the SSC extensions was not as important uh, as uh, as the AVX because it's smaller and it's having uh, better moves. Uh, so yeah, so I think this is what you should expect. You know if you compile GCC or Perl. You know the difference are very down to the noise. I uh, you know if you compile uh, things like uh, yeah, I don't know image magic. Uh, you know the difference can be quite big. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if switching the full distro makes sense. You know unless you are very focused on on image processing and these things. Uh, but yeah, this is this is pretty much uh, pretty much uh, the picture. You know you should not expect. Uh, bigger than 1% change on the standard integer code and and you can expect uh, quite big uh, improvements on specific uh, floating point programs yeah the, the thing is also that avx you know you know it's sort of hard to switch between avx and ssa and back uh, but yeah so that's uh, that's the other issue But also, if you have some benchmark, I would be very happy to see them and, and think of them a bit.